Hi there, Laura Wilson from Gold Star Work. Today I'm going to show you how to make this starry night sky. We're not going to use any black. We're using a very limited palette and we're going to make a light sky but still make it look like the night time. I just wanted to show you the one I did earlier, this one here. And during this video I talk about how this method is a very organic method and each time you do it, it'll turn out differently. So you can see here, this is the one we're doing today. You can see how the sky is different to the sky I did here, but it's all done in the same method and yours will look different from my sky when you do yours as well. So for this painting we're going to use titanium white, tinting white, quinacridone magenta, French ultramarine blue and purple. Now I'll just show you this purple if you haven't seen any of my other videos where I used this purple because it is a very dark purple. I wanted to show you that purple out of the tube, here it is here, it's a very dark purple, it looks almost black and when I mix it with white, it's a very dull, almost grey purple. And it's really good for darkening up that purple that we're going to make, that bright purple we're going to make. So that's that purple there. So we can mix our nice bright purple with our magenta and our ultramarine blue and it makes a lovely bright purple quite different from this purple that we got out of the tube and we can push it more red or we can push it more blue and that'll give us lots of great variation for our sky. I'm going to be using this big number 18 flat brush for our initial coat. We're going to cover our canvas with the blue and the magenta and we'll put in a bit of white here and there so I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bit of the blue and a little bit of the magenta and I haven't washed my brush from mixing so it's still got purple on it and I'll add a bit of white on there and I'm just going to cover up my canvas I'm just adding a bit more white You don't have to be precise about it, you want plenty of variation. So you just pick up the different colours as you go. A bit more white. Now I'm not going to worry about going right down the bottom because that's going to be the foreground anyway but I am going to paint the sides. Now because I'm using my Atelier Interactive paints, if I try and go over with the next coat straight away here, I'm going to get this coat lifting. So I'm going to seal this off first and I'm just going to use my clear painting medium for that. Just got my clear painting medium on my plate and I'm just going to go over this painting and that will seal this layer so when I do the next coat I won't get any lifting. The reason why I am using the clear painting medium and not my fast medium fixer is because with the fast medium fixer I find do you have to be a little bit careful that it doesn't go cloudy so you want to leave that overnight and I want to carry on painting this right away so I'm going to do it with the clear painting medium I'm going to dry that off with the hair dryer and then we can go on to the next step if you're using a normal acrylic paint you won't have to do this step at all you can just go straight on to the next layer I'm going to use this stiff bristle brush it's a filbert brush so it's got a round end on it 
I'm just going to get some of this white paint and it doesn't matter if there's a little bit of the purple mixed in with there. This is my tinting white. I'm going to get a little bit on my brush and I'm going to decide where my lightest areas are and I'm just going to do little circular motions with my paintbrush. And as my paint runs out, I can move out and fade out that white a bit. Now, if I had tried to do this with my Atelier Interactives without sealing it, I would have found that the color underneath would lift and start mixing in with this color or it would start lifting and um, showing the canvas underneath. So that's why I made sure this was sealed before I did this because I'm using this scrubbing motion. But you won't have that problem with a normal acrylic paint. But because I've sealed it, I don't have any of those problems. I'm just getting a bit more white paint. So you can also get some of your pink and your blue mixed with your white and do different colours as well. So I'm thinking about where I want my lightest areas and where I want my darkest areas as I'm doing this. And you don't need a lot of paint on your brush. And I'm not washing my brush as I'm changing colours. I'm just letting that colour blend in with whatever's on the brush. Now I want this painting to be a bit lighter down the bottom than it is on the top. So I'm adding more white into the bottom. You can get some lovely smoky looking effects for the night sky. I'm going to dry that off. And then I'm going to add a bit more white. I'm just, I haven't washed my brush. It's still got the paint that I was using before on it. And I'm just going to add more white in. Because when we do the glazing, we want plenty of lights to show up that glazing colour. But I'm still thinking about where I want the lightest part of my painting. And I'm not smoothing all the brush strokes out completely because I want that bit of interest in the different shapes of the brush strokes and things. And I'm just using a little circular motion and I'm scrubbing it into the canvas. And your one will turn out differently to mine because where the paint goes and where you're scrubbing will always be different. You won't be able to do exactly the same as my one. And you've just got to look at your painting and decide what's going to look best for your picture. Before we dry that off, I'm going to put some stars on there. And I'm going to use my fan brush and it's a stiff bristled fan brush. And I've got some white paint on there. And I'm going to dip it in the water and then just put it on my plate so there isn't too much paint on there. And I'm just going to use my finger and I'm going to splatter some stars on. I find that this fan brush with a stiff brush or fan brush makes some nice bigger stars. And then I can use my toothbrush for some finer stars. So I'm just going to dip my toothbrush in the water. And then in that white paint, so I've just got a little bit on the tip of my toothbrush there, 
and then I'm just going to spray. Now I'm also going to do some ultramarine stars and some magenta stars. So I'm just going to use my toothbrush for that. So I've washed the white paint off my brush. I'm going to dip it back in the water, get a bit of my magenta. So you want a fairly watery consistency to spray. And then I've just got a little bit on the tip of my brush there and I'm just going to flick that on. And I'm going to wash my brush again and I'm going to do the same thing with the ultramarine blue. So I've got my ultramarine blue and I'm just putting a bit on the tip of my toothbrush and I'm going to spray those on as well. I'm going to get my white paint again and I'm going to do some more of my most lit areas, the bits that I want to have the brightest in this sky. And I'm using the paint that I use to flick on the stars so it's a bit watered down and you can see the paint underneath showing through and that's what I want. Building up layers. I like to build up layers with my acrylic paint because I think it gives a lot better depth in the colour and makes it a lot more interesting. So otherwise you can end up with a very flat looking picture. Okay, so that's all we need to do there. We're going to dry that off again. We're going to do some glazing and to do that we're going to mix our colours in with the clear painting medium. And what you'll find is like now you've got a not too bad looking night sky but once you start doing the glazing it'll really bring those colours to life and it just brings a lot of depth to the picture. So for the glazing I'm actually going to use a soft filbert brush. This is a number eight. So I don't want it too big now. And I'm going to use that glazing medium that I had on my plate from earlier. And I'm going to start off with a bit of this purple, this dark purple. And I'm going to mix the glazing medium into the air to make a very kind of washed out looking colour. And I don't want too much on my brush and I'm going to go in where I want those dark areas to be and again I'm using that circular motion and I'm darkening up those areas that I want to be a bit richer and darker. And if you find the paint's not dark enough you just add more of the colour or if it goes too dark you just grab some more of the glaze. If your brush gets a bit wet just wipe it off because you don't want too much on there. Go over all the parts that you want to be dark that you want to use this dark on. In this type of painting, to a certain extent, you can't just decide this is where this is going to be. You have to have a look at how it's going, and you might see certain areas that look like, well, this bit will be better darker than lighter. That may not have been what you planned at the beginning. that it's a very organic kind of method and sometimes interesting things happen that you weren't expecting and you need to be open to that, those interesting things and go with it. So I'm using very little on my brush. 
I'm using very little pressure as well and I'm smoothing out the edges. So I'm fading the edges out as we go out. Now I'm going to wash my brush now and I'm going to dry this before we do the next layer of glazing. So it's all nice and dry and now I'm going to go in with my same number 8 filbert soft brush. I'm going to get some of my magenta and I'm going to mix it in with my glazing medium. It's actually the same as I did with the purple. I'm diluting that colour down and I'm going to come in and just put bits of it where I want it. A bit too much paint on my brush there. And I'm just going to spread it around where I think that will look good. And if you want to spread those edges out even further, just put a bit of painting medium on with no paint and you can smoke them out. Helps to have some idea of the pattern you might like just to get you going. But as I said, it's a very organic type of process and it doesn't always go the way you think it will. So you've got to be open to the bits that look good to leave them alone or enhance them a bit more. Okay, I'm going to dry that off and come in with some blue. So I'm going to do exactly the same method. I've got some of my ultramarine blue on my brush. I'm going to get my clear painting medium and mix that into there. I don't want too much on my brush so I'm just wiping off some of the paint and then picking a bit up and then having a look at my picture and seeing where I want to add some blue. And it really starts bringing out those colours and bringing them all to life by doing the glazing. And I find it's better if you dry off each layer because then you don't get it mixing into what you've already done. And sometimes I like to use my finger as well. It makes a lovely soft focus to smooth that out. You can add more colour into the glaze in areas if you want. And add more glaze into the lighter areas to blend it out. So you're just going backwards and forwards with the colour until you get what you're looking for. So I've got my glazing medium without any colour in it and I'm just going to mix that with some of my white. And then I'm going to go back over areas that I want to brighten up again. I'm going to use my finger this time to just spread out those edges. So I want them to be nice and soft but I also want to control where they're going a bit more. Sometimes with the brush the paint spreads out quite a lot. So I don't want to spread it right out into all the colour that I've done. These are very transparent layers so you can see what's going on underneath and you're just gradually building up some interesting patterns. I'm just using a tapping motion there so I can take some of the paint off as I'm spreading it out. I'm going to do a bit more light down the bottom. Ready for another layer of stars 
And this time I'm going to use the titanium white to make the stars and we're going to do them exactly the same way as we did the last stars. So first of all I'm going to use my fan brush. I'm going to use my little fan brush first. And I'm going to use the titanium white so my stars will be nice and bright. And water it down. Make sure your water is clean or your paint won't translate as white. It'll end up a different colour. And I'm just going to flick some stars on. Now if you get some that are too big and you don't like, you can just tap it out with your finger. Now I'm actually going to dry that off because I've decided that um, I want to have a bit of direction in some of my stars. So I'm going to dry that off and then I'll show you how I do that. So I'm just going to use a bit of ripped up paper towel. If you had a if you've seen my um, video on how I did the stars on the Galaxy Girl or how I did them on my watercolour galaxies, this is the same method. I'm just using bits of paper towel to block out where I don't want the stars to go. And you can shape the paper towel any way you like. Normally you'd do this flat, but because I am filming it, it's easier for you to see what I'm doing if I'm filming it on an angle. So I'm just using a little bit of blue tack underneath my paper towel just to hold it on. And now I'm going to do my stars on here. And I'm also going to use my toothbrush as well and make that mixture a little bit waterier so the stars come out a bit finer. And this way I can control where I want the greatest concentration of my stars. Next we're going to do the trees in the, the little hill and the trees in the little house. So we're going to make up a nice dark colour and we're not going to use black, we're going to continue with the colours we've already got. We're going to use that really dark purple that we had earlier and we're going to mix some of the bright purple that we've made and we're going to mix that in together and I've just put a little bit of water in there and I'm watering it down a bit so I don't want to go my darkest dark right off the bat and I'm actually going to put a bit of blue in there because so I want to save some of my really dark colours for the final layer of trees. So we're going to put in our little hill shape. And the main emphasis on this painting is the sky. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of pink and I'm going to pick up a little bit of blue just to create a bit more interest in that foreground. Now I'm going to put in the little house. Now I was just using a number four flat brush and I'm going to continue using that. And I'm going to get some of my dark purpley colour that we just made. And I'm just going to block in the house. 
I'm just gonna do a little rectangle. Angle the roof a little bit. And then I'm gonna tip my brush on its side to do the little chimney. And that gives me a reference for where I want the house. And now I'm going to do some trees. Now we're going to do several layers of trees and we're going to start off with quite a bluey mixture. So I'm going to get my ultramarine blue and I'm just going to mix it with some of the purple we made earlier and I'm going to water it down quite a bit. Now at the moment I'm just using one of these dagger brushes and so these are the background trees that we're doing now. You can do this with just a very fine pointed brush as long as it's got a good tip on it. And this will add some depth into that background. Instead of just doing one layer of dark trees, we're doing several layers and building up to the darkest ones for the foreground ones. And I'm going to balance this picture by making the trees on this side taller and these ones shorter to balance out having that house there. So I'm going to dry that off and then do another layer of trees slightly darker. Okay, so this time I'm going to go in with a pinkier purple colour. And again I'm going to water that down a bit. And then I'm still using the dagger brush. Just drawing in those trees. I want the tops of those trees nice and fine, and then they get bigger as they go down. And again, I'm going to dry that off before I do the darkest trees. So I'm switching to a small brush. So number one. And I'm going to put a little bit of highlight on the house. So I'm just using a very light pinky purple here and hardly any paint 
on my brush. And I'm just giving a suggestion of a bit of detail in that house, but very little. And I've just wet my brush, taken all the paint off, and I'm just softening the lines. Now I'm going to go in with my small number one round and I'm going to use my darkest colour and I'm going to start putting in my darkest trees. So I'm letting some of that colour from underneath show through to give that feeling of depth to the forest. And adding some of that dark colour into the foreground. nice fine tips on the tops of my trees so I'm starting a little way down making sure the brush is going to give me what I'm wanting before I go right up the top so I didn't want a big thick line like I've just done here at the top of the tree you want to make sure that your tree's got a proper trunk you don't want any gaps in the middle of the tree because that would look unnatural. But you do want some gaps in between the branches so what's happening behind it can be suggested. I'm just doing some random dark lines down the bottom here. And I'm going a little bit taller as I go to this side of the picture. And you want to make sure there's enough depth in the middle of the tree and then you're getting less going out on the edges of the branches. You can spend as much time or as little time as you like. Just depends on how much detail you want to go into. This one I'm going to make a little bit smaller than the last one just to make a bit of variation. I don't want to have it look like they're all going straight up in a line or anything. This can be a bit tricky painting around the edge of the canvas. If you have any spots like here where it's coming out really bright, I'm just going to cover those up because I don't want them to steal focus away from the main areas of the painting. 
Because whenever you have something really bright next to something really dark, it's going to draw your attention. So you want to make sure that attention is being drawn where you actually want it. So I'm still using that same dark colour. I'm kind of suggesting that there's a bit of shadows going on with the trees from the moon light, the night sky shining on it. But I'm needing some of that pink in in blue and purple that we mixed in down the bottom show through. We'll do some dark trees on this side as well. I'm losing the tip on my brush because my paint was getting a little bit dry so I've just dipped that in the water. It's not getting in the way. Is it such fine little brush? I have to stand a bit closer to the painting to be able to do it. I'm just going to darken up at the bottom of those trees a bit. I'm going to do one last little thing here. I'm just going to make a little suggestion of a path, but it's going to be very subtle. And I'm just going to be showing a little bit of highlight on there, just to suggest a little bit of a path. So I'm just going to use some of this purple colour here. And I'm going to mix in a little bit of water with it. And I'm just going to dot it on. And do a backwards C type look to it. And it's going to get a little bit wider as it comes down. And I'm smoothing that out with my finger. some of my magenta and I'm going to do the same thing I'm just putting a few little dots on there and smoothing it out with my finger and a little bit more of that purple so I don't want it to stand out too much I just want to give a little suggestion that you'll probably only even notice when you get really close to the painting. And it'll just very subtly lead the eye from the bottom of the painting up to the cabin and then up around the light parts of the painting. So you can see all those different coloured stars that we made and although they've been glazed over you can still see them and they just add depth and interest to the painting. And here's our little path that we made and you can see the different colours that we used in the purple and in the trees to give that feeling of distance in the trees. And we're finished, that's all we need to do. We just need to sign the painting and we're all done. So you can make a beautiful starry night sky without using any black at all. 
and having the sky quite light, but it still looks like night time. So I hope you enjoyed that painting, and I hope you'll try some starry night skies too, and we'll see you next time. Bye everyone. Happy painting.